Okay, here we go, a cappello. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to show you is first the original theme, which sounds like this. Now we're going to play the reflected theme, which sounds like this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in Vision and Sound Part 20, QCB Time Revamp and Energy. In today's episode, we re-entered by reflecting that um, composing using um, series like Title I, Title II, Title III is becoming a thing. Um, the, what we just listened to was, was uh, Do one, but we also have Do three and Do four, which we're going to play for you in a few seconds. Um, so at major breakpoints where we're doing something drastically structurally different, but it's still the same thematic idea, we just number it. Um, we are continuing to differentiate the DNA of a composition. Where did it come from? Was it from us humming? Was it from us cherry picking composition, etc.? We did a new kind of project working with uh, recording and time stamping it. I'm going to show that to you quickly, briefly. Um, this is what it looks like. On the left hand side is a time stamp series, like 3 seconds, 15 seconds all the way down, identified here into seven, eight major arcs. So the first arc, for example, is this. So that carries on all the way through this red bar until what we called um, a shift down here at timestamp 86, which is should be that. Yep, this one. And we went through the whole piece of music, which is 280 seconds. The a really fun part is at time stamp 218, which is what we called an extended break. Extended break 218. Where is that? Here. So the reason we're doing this, this is not our music. It was a piece of music shared with us by our favorite performer in virtual reality, Carol Meredith. And she's working in a new dance and she wanted to get our thoughts on time stamp major sections of the music. So that's what we sent her. We sent her these kind of these red arcs and granular details. So we did all that. Um, and then we also spent a lot of time on a new video edit, uh, which just opens like this. Okay, we are here with Val Librarian touring the 3D in Music exhibit. And you know, remember those that have been with us that we had worked on this exhibit quite a bit in previous episodes. So this is the YouTube description for the video on the right hand side. We have a demonstration arc, which consists of uh, whatever, uh, the whole thing's 23 minutes. So, so 14 minutes of it is, is the exhibit itself and about s seven or eight minutes is uh, a discussion on 3D and learning. So we got that done and it's rendered and it's ready to post and that's our description. So that got done. So what we're gonna wrap up with is showing you our work with uh, the Vocaloid series and the Doe series. So the Vocaloid series, um, came from altering um, and structuring things. Uh, and this is kind of our final variation on it. And we went ahead and made a video of it and posted it 
but uh, we're playing the upper and lower part together. They're perfectly reflected, but we've added percussion and uh, timbre and kind of made it into a more... Um... Anyway, listen. So we like several things about that. Uh, we like playing with the percussion again. We haven't worked with percussion for a while. We like jolting our brain with the shifts in the way the percussion works. And we love how the upper lower reflected parts in custom scale 16 perfectly blend without dissonance. Um, then we shifted gears and went to the, what we call the Do series. And this is what we were showing you as the teaser at the beginning. And we had the original theme and the reflected theme, but we like how they sound together. So this is how the theme and reflected theme sound. Again, they were reflected in custom scale 16. You cannot reflect unless you assign a tonality. And then we went in and we started sticking with the upper unreflected theme. We decided to, um, we added some chords and things and we turned it into this. Just love that. But then we decided to experiment with reflecting it. So if we listen to this whole thing reflected, uh, oh, this is going to be on the fly. How can we do this correctly? We hope we get this right. So we would listen to the fourth and the sixth. Number four, number six. Reflected, we get this. We should be filling this part in here as well. So then we decided to mix it up. So now we're using some of the original, the theme is original all the way across, but the, the arpeggio, the sparkle, uh, sometimes it's the original and sometimes we're using the reflected. So this is what we now have for what we call Do 4. So that ends today's uh, episode. What we really like about this mixed version is it's catching our attention. The, the one just before it is gorgeous, but it's also in some sense traditionally gorgeous. This is 
uh, disturbingly gorgeous, if if there is such a thing, by using these reflected chords instead of the original chords, which were um, down here. And the funny thing is, some of the reflected chords still, like this is a C3-4, and this is still a C3-4. Because we're using Custom Scale 16, some chords reflect to themselves, but others don't. And that gives a really interesting variation, which is our whole idea for using music theory, which is to come up with ways of making new stuff that still sounds cool. So our ideas for next time are, our ideas for next time are, we want to continue uh, revisiting how Do 3 and 4 compare. Uh, probably want to add, um, finish out, uh, do, whatever it was called, three, reflected part extension. Uh, and then we want to post that 3D and music video, edit, and then our good old friend to be determined. Shout outs to methodic innovator, silent lurker, Mr. Spat showed up again. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back. And do keep on streaming. <laughs>